Hello there, I'm Mike Creevy for Homeschool Connections, and with me today to talk about her courses is Victoria Pulliam. Victoria, how are you doing? Doing great. How are you, Mike? Great. Good to see you. Yeah, and it's uh, something I've been doing, just asking folks right off the bat, if you know, you just want to share a little bit with uh, our viewers here today about your own background and kind of what led you to Homeschool Connections. Well, um, I am friends with the daughter of one of the administrators of Homeschool Connections, and um, I was looking around for something to do after I had a couple children on the way, and uh, <laughs> she introduced me to the, the concept of Homeschool Connections, and I said, okay, please, you know, I, I'd love to do that. So I got signed up as a monitor, and um, in my interview process, I mentioned that I was teaching Gregorian Chan a little bit at um, my parish school currently, and um Months later, uh, that was remembered, and I was approached to teach a, a course on it for Homeschool mm -hmm. Connections, and I've really enjoyed doing that. Well, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, and is that um, – so your own kind of interest in that uh, – in Gregorian chant, does, does that go – how far back does that go, I guess, is what I'm asking. Like, how deep is that in your blood? <laughs> pretty deep. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, I – have been going to Latin masses since I was pretty young, and my dad used to play Gregorian chant CDs during, um, like on Sundays, just to to keep that atmosphere of Catholicism yeah. throughout the day. Then I was um, discerning religious life, and I was in a congregation that chanted part of the liturgy on a daily basis nice. for about two years. And ever since then, I've been in church choirs. Uh, right now, I'm in a church choir directed by my husband. So. Oh, just always cool. kind of been a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Does, is that how you guys met? No, <laughs> um, not not directly, but kind of because okay. he he showed up at our church one day and uh, just kind of silently joined the choir, started singing tenor to Obona Yezu behind me, and I thought, wow, I don't know who that is, but he has a really good tenor voice. <laughs> so, sort of. <laughs> well, that's very cool. I'm just because that, yeah, that's those those connections are. It's like it's obviously meant to be, right? <laughs> so, Absolutely. <laughs> So what, uh, how did you kind of conceive this from the get-go of, of what you wanted to accomplish with it? Or just, just what is your course, you know, what's it, what's it kind of look like? How do, you, how do you go about teaching it? Well, I didn't really have much to start off of. You know, like if you're a biology, a biology teacher, you have a biology textbook. Um, there are not really any good textbooks for Gregorian chant for something so short, as, since mm. my course is a summer course. So I just kind of thought, what do I want the students to get from this? You know, what what am I trying to give them? And I'm trying to give them an appreciation for Gregorian chant and um, a, a little bit of a basic ability to sing it if they ever get the opportunity to be part of a scola or even just to sing it for themselves or their family. So um, I just thought about that and kind of condensed it from there to what can I give you in, in six sessions? <laughs> Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. And it's, uh, what's so funny to me is how, um, I, I, well, I don't know, at least anecdotally, I feel like there's a real growing interest among, especially young people, even if they don't know anything about the history of it. Um, my own knowledge is, is basic, you know, of course, but do you have, so like within this, do you have, um, like how much of it is, is kind of exposure to the history and sort of the con conceptual side versus practical? Like, it's pretty kind of split thing. in half. So the first okay. week, the first three sessions, I talk about the history. I talk about why it's important. Um, all throughout the course, I have a Latin prayer in the beginning that I'm using to say, hey, here's an example of this kind of chant, you know, whatever it may be, if it's a proper of the mass or part of the divine office or just a hymn. Um, and then the second half, the second week, we focus on reading the music and learning how to sing it and, and just the the rules of singing in general and then at the end they record the piece and send it to me and i Ooh, grade it that's so cool and do you find like uh, so far at least uh, do the students tend to be somewhat familiar already or are they, they pretty experienced or you get some some folks who are just newbies who really want to try something totally different is there a range there i'm just curious there is definitely a range i get all of those cool. um the first year <laughs> i taught it i had one student who um was like in and of herself the scola at her church so she was oh, wow singing solos and then i had a student the same year who didn't have any exposure to music and i generally wow. get about that that kind of range so it can be a little bit challenging to cater to both ends of that spectrum but it's, it's definitely fun <laughs> well and i imagine I, I would think there would possibly be some uh, at least potential there for um the students who do know a little bit more maybe being able to help coach a little or at least get some exposure to to you know <laughs> that maybe their 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 <laughs> gift that maybe uh, they possibly even can take for granted a little bit sometimes is something that they can help others with and share 
definitely. Yeah. They, uh, yeah. the class is usually pretty interactive. So I forget a word or I can't figure out how to explain something and somebody will fill in for me and be like, Oh, you mean this? <laughs> Thank you. There we go. <laughs> That sounds like a typical homeschool connections chat where like, I, you know, I'm in the middle of something and some, you know, like, what was that thing that Tolkien said? And like, oh, it's on page 64, you know. Right. Like, and they quote okay. it from memory. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. You know, which yeah. is for a lot of stuff too, you know, chant, Star Wars, Tolkien. I don't know. It's a whole range. Whatever we, we love may our be. Students. <laughs> yes. That is what we love about homeschoolers for sure. They have the best yeah. specialized knowledge. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, and I think um, the range of, like I said, you know, the, the, kind of there's a ubiquitous quality i think to chant even if people don't realize it i mean and I've, I've even seen a revival of it i don't know how much of a fan i am of some of it it can be a little overly dramatic but on, on spotify you know there's a lot of these chant based you know kind of playlists and stuff like it, it seems to tap into even folks who aren't necessarily consciously you know catholic or, or religiously minded um do you do you find that with with you know your own experience of chant maybe not in a homeschool connections classroom because we typically have our our catholic homeschool you know, students but what's been your experience with just the openness to to chant or as a doorway maybe to even some deeper evangelization through beauty it definitely has its own intrinsic value so i think that everyone can appreciate it even without a religious background and i find that from a secular point of view it tends to be a little bit more like an example of something that you might listen to if you're a little bit of a nerd or mm -hmm. <laughs> um just you know a person who really likes kind of obscure things <laughs> which sure. still i think applies to many of us but <laughs> even yep. with a religious aspect but um there is definitely a a subculture of it around where you can find yeah. playlists as you said on spotify made by just random people who have no connection to it religiously and you can tell when they you know mislabel things that's not what that is but right good try you know <laughs> but definitely it's around it's still kind of in people's subconscious uh even yeah. after all these years and i'm i'm hoping to help bring it out a little more into the light sure that's so cool and, and i even you want to talk about obscure i even found uh this just popped in my head the other day i was playing an old like emulated 1992 like PC Indiana Jones game with oh, my nice. daughter. The, I, it was a point and click game. I loved it. I, I, I played it when I was a kid. And um, now I know, I didn't know then, but there's one scene where they're going through Atlantis and the the really like the MIDI file, like the old school kind of computer music just starts playing the DS Irae. Uh -huh. And I was like, no way. I was like, that. <laughs> I just laughed. I said, I know what that is. But, right. but, but it fit, you know, like you said, the intrinsic, I mean, it, has a grave, you know, sort of kind of scary, but, but kind of, I don't know. There's just, it had that effect that whoever was the, 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 uh, writing the music for this, you know, Indiana Jones game <laughs> knew enough to know that. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, Victoria, I, I, we uh, are just doing these short little videos here, kind of getting people connected and we don't want to give away too much, of course, you know, <laughs> they want to take the course. So what can, um, uh, anything else you want parents or students to know or how best they can uh, reach out to you, get in touch, learn more? Yeah, absolutely. I am always open to any kind of questions or interest. I would be pretty excited if I got an email from anybody. So <laughs> uh, my uh, the best way to contact me is just through my Homeschool Connections email address, which is v-p-u-l-l-i-a-m at homeschoolconnections.com. Perfect. Okay. Well, Victoria, thank you so much for stopping by and talking about your Homeschool Connections courses with us here. Absolutely. Thank you, Mike. Yep. God bless. You too.